Hello, my name is Nathan. You're watching Nice at Dice, and I'm doing something a little bit different with this video. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to play a game that I invented that you can probably play with components you have at home right now. To explain where this game came from, uh, there's a very popular game called Uno. I played it a lot as a kid, uh, and my opinion of Uno is that it is not a great game. But it's a fine activity to enjoy with friends and family when the game itself is more of a background to the conversation and just enjoying the association with your, your friends and family. In that sense, it's, it's fine for what it is. Now, there's been a sequel to Uno that's been made called Dos. And while I haven't played it personally, the general consensus that I'm hearing is that it is even worse than Uno. So. If, like me, you feel like Uno is already not a great game, uh, it's a little surprising that somebody sat down to make another iteration of it and what they made is even worse. But it got me thinking, uh, could I take the basic principles of Uno, or the basic components at least, of Uno, and create a game that's at least a little bit better? Now, better is going to be subjective for one person or another, for me, I enjoy a game that is at least a little more tactical, a little more strategic, has some more choices uh, on the part of the player. So that's what I've created. This game is called Uno Fight. It's a competitive game for two players. I'm going to show you how to play it, and then we'll talk a little bit about where you can get the rules if you'd like to give it a try. So let's go to the desk, and I'll show you how you can play Uno Fight. So what we have here to start with is a deck of UNO cards and just some generic tokens I took from another game that we're going to use to track points. You could use any tokens or you could just keep points uh, with pen and paper, whatever works for you. At the beginning of the game, you're going to shuffle up the deck. You're going to deal five cards to each player and then we're ready to go. So one player is going to take their hand of cards and they're going to choose one card to play. The first card can be any card they like. So for example, they may start by playing this red one. Now the other player is going to look at their hand of cards and they're going to make a similar decision. So they may start by playing this yellow two. Now you notice the cards uh, are not played one on top of the other like in a normal game of Uno. Uh, what's going to happen is each player is building a line of cards that is uh, specific to them. So for this player, his next card is going to be to play this red five. And we'll go back to this player. He's going to throw down his yellow eight. This player is going to put down his red two. This player is going to put down his blue eight because it matches the number. So obvious, just like in your typical game of Uno, when you put down a new card, it needs to match either the color or the number. So we'll go back to this player. He's gonna be able to put down this green two because it matches the number. This player is stuck with nothing he can legally play. So he's gonna pass. When he passes, he gets to draw a card. Okay, and we'll go back to this player. Uh, he's going to play this card. And then this player uh, could play this draw two, but for the sake of our demonstration, we're just gonna say he chooses to pass, drawing another card. And then we're back to this player. He has no cards left in his hand to play. He's going to pass, drawing a card. And because both players have passed consecutively, that signals the end of the round. So now we're going to see how many cards each player has in their line. Uh, this player has five. This player has three. So this player is going to score a number of points equal to the difference. He had two more cards than the other player, so he got two points. The object of the game is to get six points or more. So we're going to discard all the cards that were played. Each player is now going to draw up to uh, five cards, if they had less than five cards, and they're going to play another round. Now, obviously, there are special cards in Uno, and the Uno fight still has those five cards, but they work slightly differently. So we're going to explain each of them in turn. So a skip if played, uh, skips your opponent's turn. And it goes back to you and you get to play again. Pretty straightforward. A wild card is 
uh, can be played following any card you like and can be followed by any card you like. That's all it does. The draw two card, when you play it, uh, skips your opponent's turn, but it allows them to draw two cards. The draw four also skips your opponent's turn, has them draw four cards, and it is considered a wild. So it can follow any colored card and be followed by any colored card. And then finally, the reverse. When you play the reverse, it immediately ends the round as if both players had passed consecutively. That's the general gist. So having explained all of that, let me walk you through just a few rounds of a game to give you an idea of some of the choices that players are faced with. So I'm going to deal out two hands. We'll say this player on the left is going to go first. So right away to start with, I'm going to have him play this skip, and then for his next turn he plays that four. Now this player is looking at his cards and he's trying to think uh, what are the order of cards he could play to get as many cards as possible played. So he's got a couple of options here. For example, he could start with this blue eight. Now back to this player. He doesn't have anything he can play on that four, so he's going to have to skip. This player can come back and play this blue six. This player is now faced with the opportunity of playing this draw four. Now this is going to skip this player's turn, but this player gets four cards, which means there's a better chance now for the player making the move that his opponent will have cards to continue his line. So playing the draw two and the draw four is a bit of a, a double-edged sword because it skips one of your opponent's turns, which helps you get ahead on this the number of cards in your line, but it also gives your opponent more cards to work with. But since he just skipped that, he's going to go ahead and play this yellow reverse as his next card, and that immediately ends the round. So he has two more cards than his opponent. He's going to get two points. All these cards get discarded. He has only two cards, so he's going to draw three more. He has more than five cards, so he doesn't do anything. Um, if you have more than five, you don't discard down or anything like that. You keep all your cards to the next round. And because this player had the last turn of the previous round, this player is going to start the next round. So now he's got quite a few options. Um, he's going to start with this red, and then we'll see what this player can do. Well, he's got a lot of blues, so he's going to start by playing this yellow then this player can come along behind him and play a red nine. Now he can switch over to blue with that three. This guy's coming up behind him. He's gonna play this red eight. This player is gonna play this two. This player is gonna switch over to yellow. See, he's watching that he's staying one card ahead of this player so that if it should end on his turn, uh, he'll get at least one point. This player is looking to try and keep up with him as long as he can. Uh, he's going to play this card, so stay one card ahead. Well, this player basically now is faced with the decision. He could throw this down in the round right now without giving this guy a chance to score any points because it will be even at five and five or he could pass and draw a card and hope that he'll get something he can keep going. But at this point, the best move for him is probably go ahead and play that in the round. He's basically gone through all of his hand, but he's forced this player to go through a lot of his hand as well. And all these will get discarded with no points scored. He's going to get five more cards. He's going to get three cards, and it's going to be his turn again. So, what can he do? He doesn't have any great combos, so he's going to start just by throwing this out there and see what the other guy has. So this player is going to start by throwing this draw two, and so the advantage of that is he skips this player's turn, which means he gets a chance to pull ahead a little bit. So he's going to follow it up with that seven. Now this player 
doesn't have a whole lot of options. He's going to throw out the six to try and just keep up for a little while. This player is going to play this seven. All right, this guy's stuck. He doesn't have anything to do, so he's going to pass. He gets to draw one card. This player doesn't have anything to do, but he's one card ahead of him, so he'll go ahead and pass, get a point. These cards get discarded. This guy's going to get three more cards. This player has six cards, so he doesn't draw any, and it's his turn to go first. So he could, if he wanted, uh, very simply throw down this uh, reverse and end the round right there and get his one point. Still has five cards, he still has five cards. So it's back to this guy. Okay, he could pull the same thing. In fact, he might as well because he doesn't uh, have much in the way of combos. So that's going to get him another point. He draws a card to replace that one. We go back to this guy. So this guy's going to go, uh, let's see. He'll go ahead and skip the other guy and throw down this four. So he's starting out a couple of cards ahead of this player. Well, this player doesn't have a lot of options, but he could go ahead and put down this two. Now this player can play this 8, he's going to throw down this 9, this guy's going to turn into green. Okay, so now this player is stuck, he's forced to pass. This player could go ahead and play his wild card, but he's already two cards ahead of this player in terms of how many he's got on the table. So if he just passes now, he draws a card, and that's two consecutive passes, gets him two points. So you can see it's very possible for someone to start to make a comeback. We've got four points for this player, three points for this player, and they're going to continue playing. I don't think there's any need to demonstrate any further, but that gives you a general idea of how the game works, and you simply play to have six or more points. So as soon as somebody uh, a round ends and somebody has six or more points, whoever has the most points is the winner. So that's how you play Uno Fight. Uh, maybe not a fantastic game, nothing that's going to blow you away, but I think it is a slight improvement over Uno. Uh, it has at least a variety of decisions that you make through the course of your turn, whether it's choosing the order that you're going to play your cards to try and build uh, a long string of cards, choosing when you're going to play cards that allow you to skip your opponent's turn, uh, whether it's worth uh, skipping their turn but allowing them to draw two, things like that. So. A number of decisions there. The reverse card in particular is really key because uh, it can end the round immediately and so if you play that at the right moment that can help you get some more points. So that's the basic concept of it. I'd be curious to hear if you have any thoughts uh, on the design, on the gameplay, uh, any questions or ideas about how it could be improved upon. If you're interested in getting the rules to this game, although I pretty much explained completely how it's played right there, but if you like the rules in a written format, you can look in the uh, description of this video, and there'll be a link there to where you can download those rules. In any case, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Uh, again, my name is Nathan, you're watching Nice at Dice, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.